Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexalex here with another Master Duel video for you guys today. In this one, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the secret event, which is, uh, depending on when I decide to release this video, either just about to come up or just having dropped very recently. Um, so, as a lot of you may have been wondering, or as, as I've seen rather uh, in the comments of the uh, announcement that I made for the Synchro event, I've seen a lot of people wondering, like, well, what the heck deck am I actually going to use for this event? Because I don't play any Synchro deck. Uh, which is not an uncommon uh, problem for us to have, right? Because unlike the Xyz Festival or Normal or Rare Festival, when we're thinking about an event like the Synchro Festival, our decks are going to be a, a lot more specialized, especially if we're not used to running uh, Synchro decks. Uh, that's because we not only have to include, obviously, Synchro monsters only in our extra deck, but what do Synchros need? Of course, they need tuners. So we also need to be playing tuners in the main deck as well. So that's, you know, more cards to craft and especially more gems to spend, and it can be kind of, like, frustrating, right? It's like, what does Konami expect me to play? I don't actually have a deck ready for this event. So what am I going to do? Well, that's what this video is hopefully going to help you with. Um, we are not only going to be talking about some options for you to play if you don't have any uh, decks that currently use Synchro Summoning, but even if you have decks that only use a little bit of Synchroing, something like Adam Emancipator or Virtual World, we'll, we'll talk about what you can do with that as well. So, what if you're, you know, new to the game, or else you've only ever used archetypes that use, well, not synchroing, like, at all. Uh, indeed, before I built my Ad Emancipator deck that I've been on for a little while now, uh, I also had not synchro summoned a single time in Master Duel up until I built that deck. So, uh, if you're like I was in that situation, well, what are you going to do? Well, of course, there's always loner decks, and as always with every event, there are three available for us to use. The three that are available here are actually based on the uh, deck in the shop, or the pack in the shop, rather. Uh, we can actually go ahead and take a look at it here. We'll just back out and go over to the shop. Um, for those of you who have not... Uh, you know, who've been living under a rock, basically. Uh, you know, we recently got two new packs announced, uh, Beyond Speed being one of them. So, if you do have extra gems still saved up from the normal rare event, which actually wasn't too long ago, um, if you wanted to, you could drop a bunch of gems into this pack. Obviously, the cards included in this pack are all going to help you with Synchro Summoning, as they include Synchro-centric strategies, such as the Stardust Archetype, the Clear Ring Archetype, and, of course, also the... Um, well, there's the Defleur archetype is the other one, but really Baron Defleur is the main card we're looking at there. It's mainly Speedroids and the, like, Synchron Stardust archetype you're going to be looking for. So, if you, again, if you have extra gems and or don't mind spending real money on gems, which I actually don't recommend doing at all, honestly, <laughs> but uh, that is one solution you could possibly turn to. But let's be real, most of us probably don't want to do that. We've probably, like me, already used up our gems that we had saved up on the packs already, so what are we to do? Again, we can look at these loner decks, which are, again, based on the uh, archetypes that we just previously discussed, that being the Speedroids, slash Crystal Wing, the Baron deck, and the, um, the Stardust slash Synchron deck. But again, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, aren't these loner decks always terrible? Like, I won't get anywhere uh, in the event if I just use these, right? Well, it seems Konami is a bit more in tune, uh, perhaps than we may have suspected when they first announced the Synchro event out of nowhere, uh, because I was panicked, probably like a lot of you are, where it's like, well, I have like no time to prepare a deck, unless I just like waste a bunch of my gems that I've been saving up. So these default decks that they gave us are actually not too bad. We're going to be going over them and going over the list here. I'm going to go from order of what I think is probably like the... I don't know about worst to best. We'll start with the one that I'm least impressed with, which is, which is uh, Revolution Calls Thy Name. This is going to be a deck based around basically like the Chevalier de Fleur slash Baron de Fleur archetype. Now, unlike Baron, who is completely generic in her requirements, a Chevalier or Chevalier de Fleur requires you to specifically use Fleur Synchron, which, uh, as you can see, is just a simple level 2 tuner, is a machine. Um, and when it's used as synchro material, use special level to a lower monster from your hand. So not particularly conducive to turboing itself or Chevalier de Fleur out. And the other thing about Chevalier de Fleur that's not super great is even if you do manage to get it out, it's pretty much just like a Sheen, like, you know, Legendary 6 Era Sheen, the level 6 synchro. It's pretty much just got that exact same effect, where once per turn is a quick effect, you can negate the activation of a spell or trap card and destroy it, which is not a bad effect, mind you, but 
Uh, for the hoops that you have to jump through in order to summon her, is definitely not that great. Obviously, Baron, Defluor's Omni Negate, and Destruction, and Monster Reborn effects are all much, much preferred. Uh, the rest of this deck does play a few, like, Noble Knight stuff, as there is some light Noble Knight synergy within the Fluor archetype. Um, yeah, the Noble Knight Shield Bearer. I guess there is the Necro Synchron, which is an upgraded Fluor Synchron, so we don't have to rely on Fluor Synchron, but there is still two of it in this deck. There's also kind of awkwardly just a couple of plants, like Hoppy Plant and uh, um, the Spore as well, so... I guess, is this a plant? No, they're machines, so no, I'm not super sure what those are doing in there, but yeah, like I said, this is probably the deck that I'm least impressed with, although I will say that we are seeing some trends even in this deck, that Konami is starting to think a bit more about, like, upping the power of these loner decks here, um, and that is the inclusion of cards like, you know, two Lightning Storm, yeah, okay, that's pretty impressive, the Feather Duster, but especially the two called by. Uh, this deck isn't playing any hand traps itself, which is actually going to be a bit of a recurring theme we'll be seeing with the loner decks, and is a bit of a point of contention I do have with them. Uh, but it is playing called by, which means Konami is at least aware of, you know, the fact that hand traps are going to hamper decks like this. Um, yeah, I mean, just looking at the rest of the deck, we've got, you know, more... Noble Knight stuff. I mean, I guess this is a Noble Arms, but it is an equip spell specific to the Fluor archetype, as well as this Synchro Dilemma here. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I'm honestly, like, just not super impressed with this deck. Uh, the extra deck is honestly pretty, on, I'm not gonna lie, mediocre as well. Um, again, the main strategy is to get out the Chevalier de Fleur, which is, eh, you know, not that great of a card. We do, we are running Baron de Fleur, so there is that, but I don't think playing this deck is worth just getting Baron out, so all in all, if you're going to go with a loner deck, I would pass on Revolution. Uh, it does not in fact call thy name, in my opinion. The other two decks, however, are a little bit more impressive. The next one I'm going to be taking a look at is the Speed Ride deck, which I have some seen some people consider to be the best of these decks. Now, I have not personally played with Speed Ride, so I can't gauge to uh, whether or not this is like a good Speed Ride list. Um, but we we do see the you know the Terra Top and the Three Toctone Borg. I am familiar with those, and I know those are good. Same with a couple of Menko. That's not bad. Um, Ultra Hound, again, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not familiar, especially like this newer, like when I stopped playing, I, I remember like this first wave of Speedroid support, and I did watch the Arc 5 anime, so I'm a little bit familiar with that as well, but uh, yeah, there are definitely some here, like the Pendulum and like this thing that I, <laughs> I don't recognize. Um, but uh, you know, we do see like the three Speedroid Scratch, I know this card's pretty good. Uh, Speedroid Wheel, no, that's not too shabby, just quickly glossing over it. Uh, the extra deck is definitely not too bad, and is a lot of where this deck shines. The Speedroid Synchros themselves are, you know, range from meh to decent, I think. But uh, where this deck really shines is the Clear Wing support. Obviously, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, even in and of itself, is a fairly good card, fairly good disruption tool. This deck's also packing a couple of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragons, which is particularly impressive. I think we've all probably come across this card at least once while playing on Ranked Ladder, while playing against a Synchro-based deck. Uh, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon being able to negate any monster effect as a quick effect and then also gain the attack points of that monster. Uh, furthermore, it also uh, gains the attack of any level 5 or higher monster that it battles. So it's pretty much impossible to battle over uh, and also includes a, again, quick effect monster uh, effect negation, which is always in any format, but especially in formats where we're limited to you know, something like an archetype or rarity limit, uh, where disruption does tend to be a little bit rarer, uh, having quick effect monster effect and disruption is very good, which again, the regular clear wing uh, can also do that, although it only does it for level five or higher monsters, or effects that target a level five or higher monster, whereas crystal ring does it for any monster effect. We're even packing the ultimate crystal clear wing synchro dragon. This, however, I do think is a little bit more of a win more card. Uh, it is certainly possible to make in this deck. I think you have to use the, yeah, the cork shooter uh, plus the clear wing synchro dragon. But for the amount of effort that you expend to make it, um, I don't know that it's necessarily worth it. Um, it can negate, you know, uh, effect. Well, actually, it doesn't negate monster effects in this form. It makes it. 
uh, makes one of your cards unaffected by monster effects, which is usually the same, but not always. In fact, not definitely not even always. Uh, this one can negate spell and trap cards or effects as well, which the other clear wing monsters cannot do, but ultimately, I honestly think Crystal Wing is not only easier to make out, but even a slightly better card. The uh, High Spirit Clearing Rider is a fairly good card. Uh, not only is it a bit of a monster in and of itself, but you can also, as a quick effect, attribute it to get out two level 7 wind synchro monsters with different names for this deck. That's going to be a clear wing synchro dragon and a clear wing fast dragon. Uh, clearing fast dragon being able to negate the effects of monsters special, sum special summoned from the extra deck and also being able to make their attack zero. So, yeah, I mean, the Clearing deck does have some good tools. Again, we're seeing Called by the Grave in this deck as well. Uh, like I said, nice to see Konami sort of acknowledging that, hey, you know, uh, for this event, uh, Hand Traps. Actually, I, I guess I can just talk about this now, right? Um, the Synchro event, is, it's kind of interesting because Synchro Summoning is inherently a bit more vulnerable to Hand Traps than other archetypes in that... Um, it's usually the tuners that we're either accelerating out or have the ability to accelerate out other materials that then go into synchro monsters. So, um, you know, they tend to be a bit more vulnerable to stuff like Ash or... I mean, I guess you could say the same of any, like, Xyz or Link archetype as well, just being able to put out multiple things. But, uh, yeah, the interesting thing about this event, though, in relation to hand traps is... As I mentioned before with the uh, last loner deck, and again, as we're looking at this one, we're seeing called buys, but we're not seeing any hand traps. Now, I think a lot of players, and I'll you know try the loner decks out myself, but I think a lot of players are going to be relying on these loner decks as they don't have too many um, you know, synchro options themselves, which means, yeah, they'll have called buys for hand traps, but they won't actually be playing hand traps themselves, which I do think actually ends up making building a deck of your own, you know, of your own, a little bit more important in this format, if at all possible. So, you know, even if we're playing something like Ad Emancipator or Virtual World with Synchros only, which might not even be as good in this format as like an optimized speed ride deck or an optimized like Synchron deck, um, they're still going to be better than these loner decks in that they are using hand traps. So, in that regard, uh, since again, loner decks I think will make up a much more significant portion of the field in this event than they have in previous events, with more players relying on them, um, it is important to note that uh, you do have to watch out for hand traps beyond just like, you know, having called buys in your loner decks. If you're playing the loner decks, uh, you just gotta be aware. You know, of, of when your opponent's playing their own deck, got to kind of watch for signs of that so you can be like, oh, now I can expect hand traps from this deck. Conversely, uh, if you're starting to see what is pretty apparently a loner deck, which you can know by studying these loner lists, even if you're not going to play a loner deck, we can then spot one and then realize like, oh, they're not going to have any hand traps, um, which is another kind of disadvantage that loner decks are going to have. All right, so we have one more loner deck actually to take a look at here, and that is the Miracles of Convergence. This one, if I was going to use one, and I'm again, I might try just each of these loner decks out. I don't know. We'll we'll see once the event actually rolls around. Um, again, it's a little bit before the event at the time I'm recording this, but I think this, in my opinion, is probably the best of the loner decks. This looks fairly similar to a uh, actual Synchron deck. Honestly, we're playing. You know, we look at the extra deck, we've got the Junk Speeder, which is much needed. Um, this one's a bit more inclined towards like the Majestic stuff, which you don't always have to play in a Synchron deck, but um, it's definitely not bad, even if you're, you know, again, just playing an actual Synchron deck of your own. Uh, but it's definitely not bad for this loner deck either. Uh, we're seeing a set of tunings, which is nice. We're seeing a Feather Duster and two Lightning Storms. Very nice, as this deck is a very weak to back row, just disruption in general. Uh, in that regard, we're once again seeing called buys, and we do actually see hand traps in this deck. We're seeing a couple of effect veilers, um, which is just one of the reasons that I think this is probably one of the better loner decks, as having the ability to again have uh, monster effect disruption as a quick effect is very important, but especially during your opponent's first turn, which of course is only possible in the form of hand traps, which uh, I think gives this deck a slight edge up on other loner decks. But yeah, just looking at the list, it's, you know, we've got a set of Junk Converters. We've got the Doppel Warriors. We've got the Jet Synchron. Ooh, excuse me. Um, yeah, we've even got, like, a Foolish here. It's looking like there's pretty much all the tools you need in order to make 
uh, all these synchro plays. You got, we've even got like both shooting Quasar and Cosmic Blazar, so you've got like multiple options, which you would want in an event like this where you can only have synchros anyway. So, um, in my opinion, again, if you're going to be using a loner deck, I do think Miracles of Convergence is the way to go. I think the Speed Raid deck is also not bad if you'd rather use that one either. Um, but definitely don't use this uh, Revolution Calls Land name. I definitely don't recommend this deck. Again, my choice, also good choice, bad choice. So, like I said, I'm thinking about using, you know, these loader decks maybe for a video or two in some of the uh, events, or in some part of the event, but, you know, you might also be wondering, well, Hexlex, what are you going to use for the event? I do have a little something I've put together kind of quickly. This list is definitely subject to change, mind you, um, but I have thrown this uh, list together. You might be able to guess, yeah, of course, Ad Emancipator, since that is the synchro-centric, or not synchro-centric, but synchro uh, using tier deck that I have. Uh, Adam Incipator, as we know, doesn't actually use that many Synchro monsters uh, compared to like Lakes. Uh, in an actual Adam Incipator deck, you'd run like four, maybe five of the absolute most Synchro monsters within Xyz, and the other nine or ten remainders would be Lakes. But uh, this deck can definitely work as a Synchro only deck. Uh, we have made a few changes to it in regards to that, most notably to the extra deck. But let's go and talk about some main deck changes as well. Uh, so for this iteration, obviously, since we can't use the any Link monsters, we're not using the Prank Kids engine. So as a kind of substitute, as a level 4 rock monster, I'm going to be trying the Adam Incipator Crystal Dragite. This is obviously also going to be very important uh, for our Adam Incipator Risen Dragite. If we want this spell Trap Negation, remember we need a water monster in the graveyard. However, by taking out links altogether, we lose the Crystron, Helky Fibrax, and the Prank Kids engine, which includes Dropsies. Dropsies and Helky Fibrax being the water monsters that would, uh, quote unquote, turn on the effect of Dragite here before. So now we're using the actual Adam Emancipator Crystal Dragite, which is actually not even a bad card. You could definitely use this in like an actual, you know, ranked ladder Adam Emancipator deck as well. I wouldn't use three copies necessarily, but one, maybe two at the most you could think about using. This card is definitely not bad. Uh, when it's special summoned by an Adam Emancipator effect, we get to draw an extra card, so it's extra advantage, which, which is really nice. Um, and if it's in the graveyard, uh, we can even uh, return it to the top of the deck by shuffling back our Dragite, so we can recycle the Dragite with you know the Dragite Crystal if we absolutely need to, um, which is a good backup plan. Another notable change to the main deck that we're seeing here is the inclusion of Infinite Impermanence uh, over something like Forbidden Droplet. In this format, I'm a little bit more concerned about stopping my opponent on turn one, as I mentioned, um, than I am stopping a pre-established board. Now again, this list is subject to change, and I might find when actually playing against these Majestic decks that, hey, maybe I do actually need Droplet against them, so I can just shut them down, because I'm pretty sure they have like sort of Omni Negate effects. Um, Again, that'll just come with time. If I do end up changing the list, I'll be sure to update you uh, in a video where I showcase this deck actually being played uh, during the event. We're playing Weeping Idol in this deck as well, which I don't normally play in Adam Emancipator, but is actually a pretty good option in regular Adam Emancipator. Not even just as like a tech. Well, I mean, I guess it would be as a tech, but um, yeah, Weeping Idol definitely playable in regular Adam Emancipator as well. It's here to help us get out Herald of the Arclight, which it would be used for uh, in the, blah, 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 what do you call it? Sorry, words. Um, <laughs> you would also use it for that purpose in um, regular Adam Emancipators as well, to help get out Herald of the Arc Light. In this particular event, we can also use it to help get out Dark End Dragon. Since we're playing Coral Dragon in our extra deck for this event, uh, we can sync it with Weeping Idol in order to potentially make a Dark End Dragon. So there is also that use for it too. Um, yep, notably we're playing 3 Maxi, 3 Ash, we're playing a Nibiru, and the Imperms again, and also of course we're playing Call Buys ourselves. Um, but I think that these hand traps are going to be very important once again to have in an, an event like this. I'm thinking of also just putting in a second Nibiru as well. Maybe taking out an Imperm, maybe taking out like the tech Tackle Crusader. Because I don't think I may need this as much during like a Synchro only event. So uh, I think I might replace this with a second Nibiru. Because Nibiru I think is going to be very, very good. In fact, even just talking about it now, I've already, you know what, I've convinced myself to do it. Let's go ahead and look for Nibiru, and boom, I'm just going to throw in a second copy, because uh, as I was about to say, which convinced myself is, you know, even the loner decks, right? The Speedroid deck, the the Stardust deck, and I guess, I don't know, to an extent, maybe the third deck as well, but mostly the Speedroid and the 
the Stardust Synchron deck, uh, you know, they always summon a lot, a lot, a lot of monsters when they're comboing out. So having Nibiru is going to be especially important uh, in this format, I think. As well as just, again, hand traps in general, like Ashes, Maxi, uh, and Imperm, just to kind of stop your opponent in their tracks. Moving down here to the extra deck, we were playing, like I mentioned, Herald of Arclight. We're playing, obviously, since we're playing only Synchros, we were including a lot more, like, tech level 6 and level 8 Synchro monsters that we would normally never even think about going for, let alone including in a normal Adam Emancipator deck. But, you know, we've got, like, Stardust Charge Warrior could be useful in some situations. Uh, Coral Dragon uh, it could be useful for targeted destruction if we need it, as well as, again, for using Weeping Idol to make Dark End Dragon, which is even more, not even destruction, it's sending, so it even gets around destruction, is targeted, though. Uh, I've included one White Aura Dolphin, which is a, uh, another way, actually, to potentially make Dragite live. If we don't have access to Adamant Superior uh, Crystal Dragite, we can Synchro into White Aura Dolphin, um, and then potentially use this with another Adam Emancipator tuner to set up a water monster in Grave. Also, the having attack effect could potentially come up against big synchro monsters we might have a hard time running over. And there's also even a niche little effect where if you have another water monster in Graveyard, which could be a Dragite uh, Crystal, uh, you can banish it from Grave to bring this back and then turn it into a tuner, which could enable future synchro plays. So I was just skimming through synchro monsters while building this deck, and I, I saw this white aura dolphin, and I thought it filled enough niches to warrant a slot in this extra deck. We're playing an Adam Emancipator Risen Leonite in case we ever want it. You know, I don't foresee us ever summoning this thing, but eh, hey, eh, it's here. We're playing two Raptite uh, in, instead of just one because, you know, we have extra spots. And uh, there are times, even in regular Adam Emancipator, where it's like, oh, if only we had the room for a second Raptite, it could be useful in this very niche scenario. Well, now we can play it here. Moving on to level 8 Synchros again, Dark End Dragon can be summoned using Weeping Idol. Um, is a, you know, again, fairly niche card, but could potentially. Uh, fulfill some use in that regard. Colossal Fighter, a good recurable generic level 8 monster. Crimson Blade, a good level 8 synchro monster for this event. If we're able to run over our opponent's monster, we can pretty much guarantee that they can't synchro summon, well, they can't summon any level 5 or higher monsters during their next turn, which again, for this event, is going to be particularly good. Start a Spark Dragon, again, just another good generic level 8 synchro monster that can potentially save some of our cards from being destroyed by card effects. The Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, uh, can destroy, you know, can break out your opponent's board for free if we need that. So, <laughs> I have included in this, like, optimized build, right, the Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. I haven't actually crafted it yet, because you know me, I'm always very stingy with my Ultra Rare craft points. It's only one Ultra Rare, and this could definitely be used for other uh, future Synchro decks. You know, this is a good, just a uh, Synchro staple, if you will. Um, I'm a little, I'm just still on the fence right now. Maybe as I get more Ultra Craft points from the Battle Pass, I might be more inclined to craft this card. Uh, I think, again, in an optimized build of this deck, you would definitely want to include this card in the extra deck, even for just the event. Um, but again, I'm still just personally on the fence. Of course, we've got the Adam Emancipator Risen Dragite, and then Baron de Fleur, who is not too difficult to make in this deck. So again, this is the build that I'm currently planning on using for the event myself. Um, I'll try this out, and again, I might try out the loner decks a bit and make some videos about them just to give some tips while playing them, uh, because I know a lot of people, like I mentioned earlier in the video, are going to be relying on the loner decks for this event. So. Okay, I think that is just going to about do it for this video. I've covered pretty much everything that I want to here, so I hope you found this helpful. Oh, I did also mention Virtual World, I guess, in particular. Uh, I mean, I don't play Virtual World, but that is another deck that can be relatively easy retrofitted to only include Synchro Monsters uh, in the extra deck. I think even more easily than Adam Emancipator, to be honest. Uh, and it is going to be another deck that's going to be able to, of course, run Hand Traps, so you do need to watch out for them as well. Um, again, I would show an example list or something but honestly again i don't i don't play virtual world even as like a main deck so i don't know that i really feel comfortable going into what you should play in it uh for the event here but that is definitely the other deck to watch out for so um okay yep i think that's just about covers it for this one guys thank you so much for watching especially to the end like this i super duper appreciate it uh, especially if you are also commenting and subscribing but you know as always don't feel like you have to I, the last thing i want to do is pressure you guys into doing something like that um <laughs> I talk, i'm talking like i'm offering you drugs or something for the first time good lord um just know that i i appreciate even if you're just watching that's all i meant to say but uh without further ado this is hexlex Signing out, and I hope you guys have a fan
fantastic day.